Looks good. See you, Mingus. Is that a sax player? Oh. Hey, I'm going down to the Beeson Custom Shop. Can you give me a ride? Sure. Thanks for stopping. Hey, man, you look really familiar. Thanks. I think this is the place. Wow. Oh my gosh. Wow. Whoa, what is that horn? You should try that one. Wow, pretty shiny. Wow. Hey, man. Oh, man, are you kidding me, son? Yeah, yeah, you're just in time, man. I just made this uh, new sound dowser. It detects, uh, you know, good instruments and good players. <laughs> <laughs> That's about as silly as it could get. <laughs> this guy spends a lot of time in, down here in this basement. I get a little worried about him. I do. How many hours a day would you say there, Ken? I'm seven days a week, and wow. I start at 9.30. I stop at 6.30. And, wow. and, and uh, do you have a bed down here, too? Well, I haven't been kicked out yet <laughs> from the upstairs. <laughs> it could happen. Now. So what this is, is a degreasing cabinet. And there's one of the retro tenors down in there. The bells are not attached. Everything is detached, and I actually build the horns here. Whoops. So here's, here's the rinse. Ouch. Ow. That's uh, pure water. And then when I'm in clean mode, I flip this switch, and we get soap. That, get that horn was fully assembled. Literally eight minutes ago, right before you oh, came. Really? Yeah. All of a sudden, it was like apart. This is going to be a little loud because the air compressor might come on. This is another instrument here that needs a bar. Nathan the other day asked me how many saxophones I rebuilt. I thought it was an interesting question. I knew it was quite a bit, so I went through all of my records and uh, 6,423 and counting. That's, you really took records from the start. Yeah, right? yeah, because what I was interested in is why certain saxophones were so great, and then the next serial number, the horn just sucked. Well, these were made on the same day. What the hell happened, you know? Mm -hmm. They should have been burning. So that means procedures were dropped. Something wasn't checked. They didn't, they didn't do something. Sometimes they even run over by cars, I hear. <laughs> uh, sometimes this is sort of like a fun uh experiment and it turned out to be well this is more than an experiment there's a feel of a of a selmer mark six that that i just i'm so used to so I never felt comfortable in other horns because i'm so locked right. into the feel right you know there's other horns that sound very very good but there's the feel of a mark six so that's what we're trying to go for a lot of little things we could show i mean this too much stuff for for well, a video you can actually show some Features. You actually could, yeah. yeah. You know, like for example, we brought back the side high E. You know, we brought that back. Yeah. This is a closed loop. This is the side C, side B flat. So that's what we wanted to do, is bring that back. The low E flat and C paddles are also redesigned and angled slightly downwards, like they have here. They're angled a little bit, and you see how we copied those paddles. See that? Mm -hmm. Now here it is on this one, right here. We redesigned all that, see. We have this key, the G sharp key, copied. I think okay, they got that... pretty close. Yeah, yeah, they did. Look at that. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. How about that? I can't wait to hear them. The necks are actually matched to the horn, like mm -hmm. old school. Oh yeah. I did that with your altos. But the but the uh, logo. I'm very proud of that logo because my my wife mm -hmm. designed that. The uh, pontiff hat sort of thing. We did that. Even yeah. something as subtle as moving this. Oh, yeah. That's we right. moved the ring up. 
because the balance of the horn with the ring a little lower threw it off a little bit. It made it sort of want to lean this way. So by bringing it up, now it leans back. It has the right mm. balance. And plus the neck strap feels mm. the same height. You know how lazy we are. How we don't about, want to do this. About? And uh, we got the metal. Uh, the metal. We got the metal. The metal? What do you mean? Tell us about the metal, Ken. Yeah. Well, I can tell you a little bit about the metal. <laughs> I'm not going to give you all my stuff up, but we actually tested uh, several Allmark 6s. Found out what the ratio to copper and zinc is. Oh. And you can do another test and find out what the hardness is. Oh. So that tells you how it was heat treated or not, annealed, this, that, quick quenched, whatever. Wow, you're and a master. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> It's a scientific thing. It's not like a you know, hocus pocus. With the keys off, you can really hear the thing ring, right? Oh yeah. Never, oh. never saw that. Heard that. Man, I can't wait to hear a comparison. Wow. Yeah, this case. Now these cases were just fantastic. The way they shipped in them, they're real light. Did it come with, with the dust? It does come with the dust. Yeah, that's, that's, yes. that's, these, that's these cases dust. have been around. <laughs> Taiwanese hey, dust, yeah. pretty good. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you can fit this in an overhead on the plane. Of course, all of the Horns, oh, I do yeah. come with these. Yeah. You know how many sets of those comps I have? How many? Fair amount. I never use them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just lazy. Oh, and this wow. is done yes. in a vintage bear brass. It's Ken, do you, think they, do you think there's yeah. a difference in uh, resonance or sound in any way between the, the lacquer? Or the, I've found or the, that the, the ones wall? that are bear brass like this blow just a little bit darker, tend to. Mm. And the reason why is there's been no buffing at all. It's just the same wall thickness all the way through. Yeah, I've never been able to determine that. There's so many variables. In right. Yeah. And you can change it. Yeah, I can make this one play a lot brighter than it plays right mm. now. And it's so. got the matching serial number. Okay. Because these, these necks are, are actually matched to the horn. They're not just thrown in there. On a Mark VI, there's, an, there's, a, there's a nice taper here and a flare on the tone ring. I think it makes the sound sizzle and response, response mm. faster. And that's why it would be unlikely that we would make necks for other instruments, even Selmers, unless they were being matched to the horn. So we don't just sell them, yeah, try this one. Oh, it's like okay. a, to me, it's like a cat in a bag. You don't know what you're getting. You're never gonna make another Mark VI. That's impossible, right? Oh. That's done. There's great ones of those, and there's there's ones that aren't so great. But the idea of, of uh, trying to use that frame of reference and then mm -hmm. going after that, that's okay. what you can. Surprisingly enough, the sound of this horn is blowing me away. Right. It's just fat and it's got so much color to it. You know, I, jazz players want to be able to color the sound, you know, not just loud. They want, they want mm -hmm. to be able to, you know, have everything you need, you know, and texture and uh, the ability to go any direction you want. So this is, this is sort of fun because it's doing that, mm -hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Thank you.
all day, man. Yeah, so you fun. sound beautiful on it. Oh, Can you, you play it with your left hand revert and right hand reversed? sold one at the NAMM show. Oh, yeah? Yeah. If I was there. We're doing yeah. well. <laughs> Ooh, a little night shower action. Bro, this bathroom is pretty nice. A hair dryer, oh my gosh. Hey, pretty incredible and awesome coffee. Cool curtains, cool little lights. What shape would you call this? Got a little remote action with Netflix, phone action, double pillow action. Anyway, thank you guys so much for 166,000 subscribers. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs>